You're listening to the Hockey Podcast Network. New shows every day. Find us at thehockeypodcastnetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Red Wings Rant, where tirades and impassion pleas for your Detroit Red Wings finally have a home. Today, we're going to be talking about the Detroit Red Wings game versus the Boston Bruins uh, after another ugly one in Montreal. Uh, Of course, without Dylan Larkin or Tyler Bertuzzi, the Red Wings will be looking for some redemption, but of course, going up against a much stronger opponent. Before we do that, just a quick reminder, everything's brought to you by the Hockey Podcast Network. Our show is sponsored by DraftKings. Use promo code THPN to unlock some exclusive offers. And uh, if you guys could do us the biggest favor, if you hit that like button, you hit the subscribe button, we will continue to grow and we have huge giveaways to come. So keep an eye out on that. And you don't want to miss out on them, but you got to subscribe to help us out. First things first, Daniela Bruce reporting uh, Jeff Blaschel had no update on the status of Dylan Larkin. So while things did not go great uh, for Michael Rasmussen and the Detroit Red Wings on that first line, Dylan Larkin is still listed as out. Red Wings do look to have Robbie Fabry sliding in on that first line, centering Tyler Bertuzzi and Lucas Raymond. But nothing about this has me excited. Uh, This really is a moment to reflect on Dylan Larkin. Uh, For all I know, since I'm recording this on Wednesday, games played on Thursday, that Dylan will be back in the lineup. He will practice. He'll be ready to go against Boston. But if he's not, this is something that is starting to worry me. These personal reasons, uh, absences can get pretty brutal. So, uh, Good vibes, as Daniela Bruce put out herself. Uh, Good vibes out to Dylan. Hopefully everything's okay. Back to focusing on hockey. Uh, I would want to point out that um, this has been Dylan Larkin's, uh, one of his best performances so far since uh, he started his career. And he really does look to be on pace to have one of those career years. But uh, the Red Wings have absolutely needed that to find success. And we saw just how much it hurts to not have Dylan Larkin, especially to not have Larkin and Bertuzzi, uh, of course, hurt us in Montreal. But Dylan Larkin seems to be the heart of this team. And it's more than just being the, 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 the center on the first line. He is the captain for this team. And uh, it really felt like he had been reinvigorated. He had found hockey again, and he loves playing this season with Lucas Raymond. So everything about that really seemed to turn Dylan back on. It just really hurts now that he's going to be missing another game, potentially. And uh, that could really figure into an easy, hate to say it, easy win for the Boston Bruins. As you can see, the Detroit Red Wings, for the time being, uh, still stand on top of the Boston Bruins in regards to that Atlantic Division uh, standings there. Uh, Red Wings have 10 points in 10 games. Boston has 8 points in 7 games. Uh, Clearly, the points percentage is in Boston's favor right now. But as the Red Wings have played a few more games, uh, they do at least uh, have a couple of points on top of the Bruins. Again, for the time being. Uh, The Bruins are going to come into this game with a nice long break. Of course, their last game having come against uh, the Florida Panthers, which they beat 3-2 in a shootout, uh, occurring all the way back on October 30th. So while the Red Wings will be playing Boston on uh, October 4th, uh, quite a good stretch of days there where Boston was able to rest before they bring in the Detroit Red Wings to uh, TD Garden. Uh, through seven games, pesky old Brad Marchand is on top of the points leaders for the Boston Bruins, sitting at four goals and four assists, and of course that being eight points. Uh, right underneath him, Charlie Coyle, and having a pretty good start to the season, uh, I'd like to point out Taylor Hall with his two goals and three assists. Uh, his five points through seven games is something that uh, can't be ignored because as I keep going through the Red Wings' opponents, and uh, who we could possibly steal wins from. What keeps getting in the way are teams that are able to put out four lines that have the potential to score, in which case we're discussing secondary scoring, getting the best of the Detroit Red Wings. And this will be another game where the Red Wings will have to go up against an opponent who clearly has a fantastic first line coming at them, uh, with, of course, it being labeled as the perfection line. But the secondary scoring is also there for the Boston Bruins. I thought this was a fun exercise in the last game preview, taking a look and comparing the Montreal Canadiens 
and the Detroit Red Wings uh, in their expected goals for percentages. This is an opportunity to take a look at Boston and Detroit. Now, the Boston Bruins are ranked second right now, according to natural stat trick, in regards to expected goals for percentage would compare it across the league. The Red Wings are ranked 22nd. And as you can see here, when we take a look at uh, the top performers from both teams, uh, we only have five out of the top 20 showing up in the winged wheel. Uh, and of course, what, you, what is even more scary is that uh, a couple of them, including Gustav Lindstrom and notably Dylan Larkin, as previously mentioned, might not even be playing in this game. So it's safe to assume that the chances will be weighed heavily in Boston's favor. And especially if we are missing our top forward in regards to Dylan Larkin, I think that assumption becomes even stronger. If we pivot the conversation to goaltending, we might be able to make the assumption that Thomas Grice is going to get the start after a pretty good game from Nadelkovich against the Montreal Canadiens. And Boston will probably roll with Linus Olmark. Now, when comparing save percentages, you can see that Olmark has the 92.52 save percentage and Thomas Grice is rolling with 90.71. But if you take a look at the expected goals saved, uh, Thomas Grice actually takes the nod there. So basically what we're comparing here is that there's better chances being thrown at Thomas Grice and he's making those saves, but Allmark appears to be letting a few through uh, despite the fact that he comes in with a better save percentage. So there's the better chance that the Red Wings can luck out here and stay in this game even while being outchanced by Boston, strictly from an analytics perspective. So if we are going to stay close in this game, that's where the Red Wings can take advantage and hopefully get some goals from some of those superstars that we see in Lucas Raymond, and maybe we'll get to see Mo Sider's first goal. Now, that isn't to take anything away from Linus Olmark so far in his performance this season. It is just something to try and find through the trends. If there is a victory for the Red Wings to be had, that could be one space where we may have found something in the analytics where there's an opportunity. Of course, that does mean we're going into another game. We're in the last one against uh, the Montreal Canadiens. We were painting a lot of pictures and hoping for a lot of variables to turn our way. What that means is we're doing that again against the Boston Bruins. That doesn't bode well for the Detroit Red Wings and a team that uh, was supposed to be, you know, in the bottom 10, in the bottom five and be another lottery team and hopeful for the first pick this year to be out with your top forward potentially again in Dylan Larkin and continuing to play guys like Danny DeKaiser and seeing the struggles that Michael Rasmussen has had so far this year. It just goes along to say that this could be a big struggle for the Detroit Red Wings in this game. And if we are going to play this game and hope for Linus Olmark to look like a slice of Swiss cheese for us to stay in it, could get ugly. When it's all said and done, the Red Wings have given us two different teams. One that looks like the 2019 Detroit Red Wings and one that we've all kind of taken a look at this team and said this team is different. If we get that different team, hopefully that means Dylan Larkin's back in there and uh, we will have a chance to win this game when he's on the ice. But if we get that team that has struggled to beat the Montreal Canadiens, uh, this is a Boston Bruins team that will eat up that performance. So watch out, hold on tight, because we'll know probably through one period what's going on there. But regardless, as always, let's go Red Wings, and I hope we have some fun.